Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of TFG Radio. As you can see and hear, it's Adam here once again. And tonight I am joined by John. Hey, how's it going? And his one of his munchkins in the back typing away. Yeah. <laughs> Late night homework because of baseball. So that's how it goes. Uh, and uh, we have Danny. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. And uh, no Tom. No time for this foreseeable future. That's what happens when you have eight kids. Well, you know, someone has to repopulate the world, Danny, <laughs> since, uh, since apparently I'm not getting any grandkids, bitter, not bitter, <laughs> from what I've been told. Get a dog. Yeah. I, my wife doesn't even want to get cats. Normally we get cats, and I can't even get that because she – because uh, she never had pets before until the, the, the ones that just passed. And so it's affected her emotionally and uh, she needs time to heal. Well, uh, me, I was like, like almost the day after was like, okay, are we getting a cat now? Because <laughs> I've, cause I've always had cats right. and dogs and turtles and other animals. Um, so it's been, it's, for me, it's always been a, a cycle of like, Where's when's the next pet? So circle of life and all that mm-hmm. fun stuff. So hoping to get cats soon. Soon, TM. <laughs> but why? <laughs> Sunday, oh. Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> uh, because I don't have to walk a cat. Mm-hmm. I don't have to. I normally don't have to pick up after a cat every day and wait. You know. I just that's the main yeah. reason. I mean, I get it. I just I also don't get it. Like, I, and I kind of liked. Our last cat, because the cat was fine with me, but was it was an asshole to my wife, and it, it just <laughs> made me happy. <laughs> it's the little things. <laughs> yes, like I've said multiple times to multiple people, I don't get anything out of having them, so I don't really care. Oh, I enjoy. I enjoy it. Meh. Plus, I live I live near the foothills, so there's lots of critters, like little critters. Oh, I thought you meant like coyotes, so there was a chance you get to watch one get eaten. Well, there's that too. We have coyotes and eagles. Uh, uh, once in a while, we see peacocks and, and deer, but it's mainly coyotes and eagles. And mm-hmm. eagles, um, but it's mainly for the other uh, the other critters that get into people's houses normally. So, well, yeah, I can see that. I guess and you, they usually help with that a little bit. Usually, the last one always caught was uh, lizards. So to play with, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. But yeah, so so uh, it's been a few weeks since our last episode. Um, the Blood Angels finally released this past Saturday. We also had SoCal Open this past Saturday, this past weekend, and uh, it was different because they actually did an eight man team event. Our own club hashtag Rect had two teams going. Uh, local clubs XPZ had four teams. Uh, there was Git Hammer with two teams. Smite Club came by. Dice Hammer. Um, there was another. Uh, I think it was Git Hammer with two teams. Those uh, those a number of clubs that have that was able to put two teams together because a lot of locals. So like for us, for our team, we have the ones that we normally go to events with, led by Jeff, and then we have like the San Diego contingent, uh, led by uh, Jason Lenore. And I guess we used this opportunity to recruit a bunch of people. So after after the weekend, we had a bunch of new people in the Discord. So it's kind of fun. Got to see Thin Allen again. Mm-hmm. How's he doing? It was nice seeing him. It's always good to you know get new faces and see the old ones. Yeah. So, um, quick recap for our teams. Anyway, uh, our eight. I don't even know if it'd be an A team. Jeff's team. Uh, actually uh, turned out coming out lower than the other team. So they kind of flipped the last team tournament they did. Uh, Jeff's team was on top the, and the, the OC team essentially was uh, finished like a couple places below them. And this time they kind of flipped. Um, but I, I do admit Jeff was paired into uh, his team was paired into a couple tough matches. So uh, one thing to, to mention before we go any further is if you've been, Watching uh, competitive 40k in general, you know that Kicker is no longer with FLG. Uh, I'm only mentioning it because I worked with Kicker for a number of years. Oh, shit. Um, 
Usually, usually you would see Kicker and I uh, side by side events, and uh, uh, he is no longer with FLG. Um, wish him well, but uh, for those that are concerned, you shouldn't be concerned. There were there were FLG events before Kicker, and there'll be FLG events after Kicker. So LVO is still on. Uh, Cherokee's a question mark, not because of Kicker, but more because of the hurricanes. So <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> so so <laughs> we'll you be able to actually if, uh, get there via a road. I think so. Fingers crossed, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but as far as we know, all the other events are still happening. So it's like, you know, like Champs Cup, RMO, uh, ACO, LSO, all that stuff. Dates aren't uh, announced yet, but uh, they should be announced fairly fairly soon. So on, on to the other stuff. So SoCal Open was an uh, eight-man team event. There was also a narrative event, which was actually got like 40 players. There was also Old World, Age of Sigmar, a large Kill Team event, and Legion, and a Blood Bowl tournament. And uh, they had a new tournament. game. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Blood Bowl tournament. Uh, there was Battletech. And there was a new game put on by, uh, created by Play on Tabletop. And it's like a Coliseum gladiator game but it's using 40k models and 40k mainly 40k rules i think or similar it looked really interesting just to watch it the visual of it because they the the train is literally a coliseum got it so Seriously. i have to look into it more you can you can just if you if you if you know if you know the channel just go there play on tabletop and they they have videos on how the how the game works so so this year it was eight man teams. We un- unfortunately we had tw- we had an odd number of teams. We had twenty five teams. So we had we had a, someone had a buy for four out of the five rounds right. because we did have a t- we did have a team drop on on the second day. Okay, that makes sense. Which normally doesn't happen, but um, but uh, this time this I mean it happens, but not it's not normal. Um, we did have a mercenary team at one point, but that kind of fell through in the end. So a mercenary team, not like a yeah. It's basically uh, like so. So what normally happens is we have a we have the teams, and then we have a pool of players that will like like we had for our team. We had a pool of players that will fill in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If someone right. needs a player, and if they're if everyone's set, then that pool of players can form their own team. If there's an odd number of teams, so that someone doesn't have to like not not play for however long. And so, unfortunately, we didn't have that. That kind of fell apart at the end. Um, we'll make sure to have it for next year, or try to. And, uh, but, um, well, that's assuming we have it. Well, we'll have it for Champs Cup uh, next year at the very least. So, so twenty five teams. Um, at, in the end, uh, nothing really major came up. Uh, my other judge, Keith, did pop off on somebody. Uh, because they questioned the integrity of the event, more or less. <laughs> in what in what way <laughs> do you question the integrity of the event? Um, so the complaint was uh, someone was upset because they had to end their game early. And while 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 having a discussion with Keith, I'll say discussion it wasn't like arguing or yelling. They mentioned like, oh, well, in the previous round. You let everybody play all the way through lunch because parents things didn't go until didn't go live until a minute before the next round. But I, he didn't say it in the way I just said it. He said it in kind of like a snarky way, and okay. it kind of set Keith off. Be, be, and I get it because I, I try to I try to make an event as keep the integrity of it as much as possible in, in any way I can. I might get rules wrong, but I'd rather the integrity of, the, of an event stay in place. So it kind of set him off. And uh, so he, he explained to the guy very sternly <laughs> about what the situation, I use the word sternly loosely. He, it was more almost like a like a parent lecturing a kid. From what I hear, I I, well, see I can't really imagine Keith being very stern. Anyways, well, I mean, he said he felt himself go. He felt himself go flush red, and about halfway through, he had to check himself. So, 
So, and the gist of it was, and the, and the reason the, the, and I'm not, I'm not saying the round didn't, uh, the round was, the pairing didn't go off until a minute before the round started. That did happen. Right. But the reason it happened was because in the very first round, one, two of the teams that were playing each other did not put their pairings in. So the way you, the way you do the way you do teams event is you have your team is playing against each other, and then you click you on you know, BP in BCP you click on the pairing, a menu comes up and it shows eight tables or however many in or or is the in the team event, and you're supposed to match each player with who they're playing against on the on the table. It doesn't really doesn't matter what table they're at, but at least so A should be playing B and B you know B should be playing C or whoever they're supposed to play. And they didn't do that. And they couldn't figure out how to do it. But nobody told me. So it's like 1230. The next round is supposed to go off at 1245. Right, and I had to right. go find the captains. Right. Found the captains. <clears throat> By that time, the rest of the team had already dispersed to go eat lunch. So, and so the they're trying had to get keep- the record or something? Uh, no. Well, for the points and stuff. So they ha- so while one of them's giving the parents, the other one's trying to get all their their teammates together. We're finally able to get it with a, with a couple minutes before the round starts. So then I was able to do parents, and that's why the parents went late. It wasn't because I let someone play like the full full lunch during the full lunch time. Right, that's not a thing anymore. That was a thing no. like before COVID. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that was maybe the only hiccup. Um. For the and that that was for the pairings for the uh, for the paint judging we did individual judges paint judging instead of doing a team version because it was only twenty five teams so it didn't make sense to judge as a team um, and then uh, and then we added a best general for singles and and then paragon for singles since we were doing the painting for singles um, first place for painting went to Cam Howard and his custodes. He also got Paragon because he placed pretty high in the singles. Uh, and then in first place was Jay Eggert with his Chaos Space Marines because he went like 20, 20, 20, 13, 20 or something like that. But the the metric for singles was the same metric as a normal tournament. So, so it all it went down to opponent game win percentage. And then for the um, teams, uh, third place was Team Zero Comp Red, I believe, which is the team led by Junior, the winner of BAO. Second place was XPZ Maledictarum, something like that. I don't know. They pick wrong weird names. And then first place was XPZ Alpha. So congratulations to XPC Alpha. Um, one thing, apparently what they did was instead of concentrating all their better players on one team, they kind of dispersed the players among all the team, all the teams they had. Uh, that way they all had a kind of a fair shot and it allowed some of the other players to experience uh, a team event. That's kind of a cool way to do it, actually. That's neat. Yeah, and like with um, – I don't want to say without having, without going like, without shitting the bed, but at least gives them like a better chance of doing well for their first time at a team event. So yeah, that makes sense. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So so it was it was a lot of fun. It, I did enjoy having that half hour, forty five minutes of just quiet time. Nobody asking me questions. Nobody really bothering me while they did their pairings. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I could see that because uh, sure, there's not really yeah. anything for you to do while they're pairing. No, no, no. They didn't have any issues with the terrain. I made sure to pick missions that all had to use the same uh, deployment. So unlike Champs Cup, where where we, they had us changing the terrain every game, I just kept it same the same for both, for each day. That way, they only had to change it one, in, in the morning for of each day. So. So that that was fun. That was fine. Um, that that's the better way to do it, really. I mean, having to change the setup all the time every round kind of sucked at Champs Cup in Dallas. Yeah, and I learned that from ACO uh, uh, when early on about uh, when we first switched to uh, 
fixed terrain after not doing player placed anymore. So they did not enjoy having to change the, change the, the layout every time. Um, and uh, we did have issues with food because we just had the one uh, hot dog French fry vendor come to find out that all the allocation because uh, Breeders Cup, which is a lot, which is a very large horse racing event. Um, Breeders Cup at Del, at Del Mar at the fairgrounds was in like a week or two and all resources were allocated for that. So we'll have to figure out. I don't know what the dates are for next year, but hopefully it's out I mean, of time. They, they just need a different venue. That venue sucks anyways. Like it just does. Well, Concrete well, floor it, stinks and like. Well, okay. The the, one, was, the the internet's trash, so you can't stream anything. It's just not. It's not great. Well, this year, this year it was in a bigger hall, and the and the <laughs> and basically they put up the walls on top of the parking lot, so the floor was actually asphalt and not cement. A little better, but um, and the hall, the hall was huge. It's like twice the size of the one we used to be at. Which is why they put all those other events in there and still have a a two hundred person eight man event, eight man team event. As the so we had about I think it was like four or five hundred people total over the weekend. So, and of course it was right next to the gem show, just like it always is. Um, no, last time I was there it was a garden show. That was two years ago. Last year it was a gem, a gem show. And it was, and it was still, that was there again this year. Um, I don't I know, man. I never liked that cartoon. I always thought it was stupid. I don't oh know why people gosh. go to a convention for it at a, at a <laughs> fairgrounds. It's just weird. I didn't even think it was that popular. How could you get that many people there? The eighties were a time. Uh, I think that I think that was that basically summed it up. I mean, it was it was pretty chill. The la, like the last few events I've I've had to do. Um, tenth edition seems to be. I mean, there weren't that many rules issues. I'm trying to think of any one that stood out that we got a lot of. We got a lot of questions on Overwatch and, and different aspects of it. But nothing, nothing like not a lot, a lot. But I mean, that's the one I, that sticks to sticks to me from that event. Because you know, normally there's like one question that people always ask for some reason. It's never the same, too. What was the Overwatch um, question about? It was it was every kind of question. You know, can can the can my unit shoot Overwatch? Can my pistol shoot Overwatch? Can my tank shoot out of Overwatch? Can I shoot into a unit at Overwatch? Uh, it was just all kinds of different things. Um. In, in this one, we also – something I did different was that I, I let the um, I let the captains vote on a few things. Like when the, the, uh, when the um, FAQ, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and the errata came out, I said if they, I had, I, if they wanted to use it, they said no. If they, I said what, what date do you want to use as rules cut off, and they changed it from the original date, which is fine. And there's a couple other things I asked them about. So that seemed to work well. Um, I kind of liked having only the captains in the Discord as opposed to everybody, everybody, like Champs Cup had it. Yeah, as, as I much as, as much, Yeah, really as much as I like. Who needs to be in there anyways? Yeah, because as much as I like including people, there's a lot of voices in there and we really, really only need them. And the captains should be able to convey whatever information we need to to let them know and, and – and vote on so. Um, again, they see people seem to like the format, so we'll most likely do it next year. But I'm not going to 100 100 percent say for sure. But you never know. So just keep an eye out when they do make the announcement um, soon. Um, but I think that was it. Um, so we can briefly talk about the the FAQ and the errata. Um, Points wise, uh, I think. Uh, let me see. We can talk about the points first. Let's talk about how they affected our armies. For me, great. 
Yeah, of course. Well, course. maybe not great. I don't run Dark Apostles and uh, Accursed Cultists, so Fair it enough. didn't matter for me. Uh, Abaddon went cheaper. Uh, Warp Talons went cheaper, but only if you took five band squads. And the um, Predator Destructor, which is the last cannon, all last cannon one went cheaper, but nobody takes it. Everyone takes the other one anyway. Um, for my, so for my army, it actually went down points, and so I have to figure out what I need to add or not add to it if I, if I even want to add anything. So, so nothing really changed for, for chaos space Marines. John, you want to talk about Knights? Yeah. So, I mean, a bunch of stuff went down for Knights and chaos Knights, but then they boosted Canis Rex mostly because Canis Rex keeps getting put into like custode lists. <laughs> and it's a little silly to do that. Cause he's like one of the only things that makes, a night list playable and so you reduce points on some things but then you boost the points on the thing that everybody has to take no matter what i don't know right. it just felt silly like you're 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 punishing the entire faction for the fact that you allow this one model to ally just uh you know change its data slate canis rex cannot right. be a part of any army that's not an imperial knight army done okay but you know <laughs> We get the inelegant, ham-fisted response as usual, so that's fine. Yeah. Uh, um, Necrons. Oh, yeah, you do Necrons, too. Necrons, they're fine. I mean, some of the stuff went up, but but for the most part, they're still they're still, they're still still solid. Yeah, I don't think they changed anything no. in, that, in that regard. I know a Sister's got a bunch of point hikes. So Yeah, Sister's kind of needed it, unfortunately, because... Some of that stuff was uh, I know, cheap. I know from our um, Thousand Sun players that po- their points went up, but not enough to really change, at least our players, our teammates' players, at right. least change his army in a big way. Right, right, right. Aldari points actually went down, which is what kind of surprised me. No, because they're struggling, man. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's also it's all stuff nobody uses, like Corsairs and Falcons. That's true. They're trying to get you to play stuff <clears throat> rather yeah. than make the rules better, as usual. Why would you want to do that? Uh, Bulgren and tank commanders went up for Militarum. A bunch of stuff went down. But 18 today. Bulgren are still viable. Yes. I know you and Danny talked about doing the 100, 100 Marine body. Yeah, can't do that and now. Their points... Uh, you can, but it's not as many bodies, I think. I think we talked about that a little bit. Yeah, in the chat. You, you can't take the 100 man anymore. So, uh, Blood Angel points, eh, it's kind of a mixed bag. We'll have to see with the new book just coming out this past weekend. Demons weren't too bad. We talked about Knights, CSM. Not, not big adjustments, at least, or not, you know. Earthquake Shattering. Dark Angels, Azrael, Deathly Knights went up, obviously. A bunch of other stuff went down. Uh, Death Guard points went down, but who cares? Death nah. Guard's done good. A bunch, a bunch of points for Jakari went up, but even then, Jakari, you know what? They've always been cheap. Yes. Ever since I can remember, they've always been like a cheaper version. Always been like, man, how, how do you fit all these models in this army? Yeah. So, So even with points... Points adjusted to be higher. I think it still doesn't. Like you said, it's more. I mean, yeah, right. Just <laughs> so wait for their book to come out. Cult went down. Green Knights went down. Imperial agents. It's funny because they did a thing where they increased the cost of sub oh, Jesus subductor squads, but only if you take them as an ally. Okay. Because I think they were the, if I remember correctly, they were the cheapest the cheapest unit you could take as an ally in that army. Okay, I mean, I guess. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, uh, Leads of Otan, the uh, Jaegers went up in cost, but only to ninety points. Uh, since I have a Votan army now, I guess I, I still have to buy the Jaegers. <laughs> but but every but everything else went. Uh, <laughs> Well, I guess since I have these models now, I better go ahead and pay more money for more of them. Well, that's how it works, right? Yeah, so. I assume so. I wouldn't know. Or a lot of orc points went down. 
So, yeah. Space Marines, uh, the things everybody uses, like the bio- biologists, the assault intercessors, and the eradicators, all those went up. Everything else went down. Okay. Or most everything else went down. Like the Mario Kart that nobody uses anymore and a bunch of other stuff. So The Mario Kart. <laughs> I like hearing you repeat um, that one. It's good one. It's, that's what it is, right? right? Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm pretty sure there's probably models out there. Look, man, I'm, not, that, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I enjoy hearing it <laughs> referred to that way. So. I'm sure there's models out there with, with that going on. So I'm sure I am sure as well. Uh, Space Wolves up and down. You know, the stuff everybody uses went up. Thunderwolf Cavalry, uh, Logan, Bjorn, all went up in points. Everything else went down. Were people running uh, Bjorn? Yes. Oh, yeah. Him. I'm surprised they didn't raise the price on Murder Fang. Because hmm. Murder, Murder Fang's Murder Fang's really good. Can't go after Murder Face. <laughs> murder your face. Uh, Tau, kind of a mixed bag. Uh, a lot of the Kroot stuff went down in points. So you might see more Kroot in a lot of armies. Tau? Talking about Tau? Yeah. Playoffs. I was talking about Kroot. All the other stuff's all the same. A few, you know, everything that people use went up. Right. Everything they don't use went down. That's more or less, and that's typical GW. In terms, in terms of their adjustments for things like that. What we really need to talk about, which was one of the questions we had in the captain or the polls in the captain chat, is the the changes to the Pariah Nexus tournament companion. What were those? So, for those that don't know, uh, if you play in tournaments, GW has a a turn, what they call it a tournament companion. Yeah, it's a packet. Which nobody can how get. to run the tournaments, missions to use, layouts to use, things like that. Uh, the, the one of the big things is they changed how secret missions work, uh, so that you now cannot score any primary in the last turn. In the last turn, in the last turn of the game. So if you chose a secret mission, and for some reason you only scored like. 10 points so far mm-hmm. in primary. You can't score primary on the last turn anymore. You can only score whatever the secret mission is, the 20 points. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, you're still capped at 40, but... Yeah, yeah. It's what it is. For a lot of players, uh, that 20 plus primary, like, would get them to that 40. Right. So. Get good. So they did that... Um, they removed recover assets as a fixed uh, secondary. Okay, uh, I know that one was pulled on me by the Grey Knight players, where they put the character in the in the back corner yeah. of my deployment zone. Yeah, and then score recover assets like every turn. Yeah, so it's always those tricky Grey Knight players. Yeah, uh, and then just some uh, cleaning up of the language on a couple of the other stuff. So. I mean, I'm always in favor of cleaning up the language, especially when it doesn't make sense to be going. <laughs> oh, yes, John. Of course. Um, I'm trying to see what else. Scorched Earth, they changed. What did they change Scorched Earth to? Oh, they changed it to player instead of unit burns an objective. Lynch pain, they, they capped at 15 points per turn. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and hidden supplies, they kind of clarified how the move, moving of the objective goes when you first uh, deploy the uh, Got it. The objectives on the table. Again, makes sense that you would clarify. Uh, then questions are, are just little clarifications on stuff, on some of the secondaries, uh, mainly Mark for Death. What about it? And the ter- and the terror. Well, because sometimes, like one of the questions is if I if I choose a unit that has an attached character for, for Mark for Death, do I have to kill both? Hmm. Or if well, in this case, they are, they're asking if if there's two characters. Let's say uh, Abaddon and uh, Master of Executioner. Yeah. Uh, in a chosen squad, right? So, and I and I choose that unit as Mark for Death. Yeah. How do I get it if I kill one the chosen? Do I get it if I kill Abaddon, or do I get get it if I kill the Master of Execution, or do I have to kill all three? And GW said you just have to you just have to kill two out of the three. That doesn't even make any sense. 
It doesn't have to. Like, of all the options, why pick the one that nobody was even considering? Because it doesn't make yeah. any sense. It says you have to kill the bodyguard unit and at least one of the leader models. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, makes perfect sense. Oh, my God. That's super annoying. That's a really annoying answer. And then they, you know why it's an annoying was- answer? I'm a, look, look. You know why that's an annoying ass answer? Because it's not an answer. No, it's not because it's not an answer. It's because it's the answer that's going to cause the most problems. Because nobody's going to fucking believe their opponent. <laughs> <laughs> when they tell them, no, no, I got to kill the main unit and one bodyguard and then at least one of the other ones. They're going to be like, what? That doesn't make yeah. sense. Like, they're literally going to say that doesn't make sense. And they're either going to have to carry around this errata or, or, or like, hope the other person uses the app and pays for it, and then the app is updated because it probably won't be, and this probably isn't in there anyways, because I'm pretty sure it's not in there anyways, right? Why would you put your tournament companion in the app that you use to help run your tournaments? And then the other, (laughs) they're going to have to call a judge. They're going to have to call a judge every time because nobody's going to believe that's the ruling because it's a dumb ruling. Um, An interesting one. Moving on. How dare you ignore me? You can, I, the people can listen to you, John. Um, is regarding terraforming, and it says if my opponent terraforms an objective, can I terraform it? Because the way the wording is, it sounds like you can, but GW already said no, which really limits what you can terraform. This is the uh, Warhammer version of if a tree falls in the forest, nobody's around here. Basically. Nice. Nice. Nobody can terraform it. Uh, then just some rules clarifications. I think. I think the. Um, oh, man, I'm still kind of pissed off at that answer. I think the 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 biggest thing is the um, is the changes is the change to secondary. The, I mean, secret mission. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I I I get why. I do. I understand. I think it's I, I I think that's a good change only because of how much you can score going second. Mm-hmm. No, I I agree. I also think it was a good change. Um, got no, got no problems with that. If it use an errata, I don't think there's anything too big. I know in Imperial Agents they they clarified the nesting doll situation with the rhino. I don't know if you knew about that, John. Yeah. How do they clarify it, though? Does, does it make sense? Or did yeah. they say, like, it's only a nesting doll if? So the, the rhino in the nest one doll, not, but not three. Did not list, like, what models. Not, it left it open to interpretation as to what you can put in there. So it'd be, mm-hmm. so it's like, can I put a rhino in a rhino in a rhino in a rhino? Naturally. Can I deploy my sky shield landing pad on its side? Oh my god! So they just clarified uh, basically what can be uh, put inside of the rhino. Of course, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, so I think that was one. I believe uh, orcs. Um, theirs was there's a slight change. In regards to uh, if the wall of act is active for your army, where before it just said if the wall was active, which so if it's orc versus orcs, it wouldn't matter who called it, you would be able to use it. So now they clarified that it has to be for your army, oh, okay. not your opponent's army. Oh, all right. I mean, sure. Whatever. At least that ruling makes sense. <laughs> I think that was the big, the big thing to it. Okay. I'm just double checking right now. Yeah. Of course. Uh, 
I think there's something in the wording for for the for the law for mega knobs that lets them do it. Dead list of mega knobs, mega knobs themselves. Wong, war boss knobs and mega knobs. It says when asking when using the bully boys attachment, do the war boss yep. knobs, mega knobs abilities that check if the wog is active for your army work during the second wog. Yes, for the purposes of those abilities, the wog is treated as being active for your army. Okay. Was that not the way it was being ruled? I don't know, because I don't play orcs. <clears throat> I don't remember. Okay. Because no, cause once they change the abilities, the invulnerable save of the Mega Knobs, yeah. And up the points, everyone stopped playing Bully Boy, so it wasn't, it wasn't an issue anymore. I mean, that does make sense, so. <laughs> so. Um, I don't recall anything else standing out. I think a lot of it was just clean up and giving synapse of things. Uh, Danny left us, but if he was back, I'm sure he would tell us about the Tyranids. <laughs> synapse. Stupid. I don't think there was anything in the chaos stuff. There was just oh, there was stuff about um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the soul link one, the one where you exchange bodies with uh, with another model. But I think that was it. Soul link. Um, what is it? Um, do, 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 do. They clarified that you can't stack um, the uh, the increased cost, the increased CP cost. Were we doing that? Well, yeah, because Vect, you know, Vect. <laughs> oh, right. I always forget about Vect. Vect now just increases the cost by one. I guess if you have mm -hmm. another way of doing it, you can't. You can't stack, stack it. It's, just, it's all. It's always one. Okay, that's fair. I'm not going to read the the uh, the uh, the Soul Link questions because I haven't seen anybody using Soul Link. There's a lot of questions for Soul Link, though. <laughs> huh? That's Jesus, there's a lot of questions. Jesus, a lot of questions. It's like five. That seems like five too many. Well, there's one, one. There's one, two, three. Four, five. Five for Soul Link, but six for the Deceptor's Detachment. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Okay then. Because I don't I, I don't see it being played, but whatever. Right. What do I know? I, I only play a tournament must once be every two years. Playing it somewhere. Right. It has to be um, happening. I mean, this is just a quick rundown. If you, if you want a more in-depth look, there's plenty of other shows and podcasts that, that do more of a, a deep dive. Yeah, for sure. To the points and the questions. Mm -hmm. This is just our kind of initial take. We're not here to read for you guys. I haven't heard anything like too substantial of like, oh my God, this army's now broken. But we'll see how Blood Angels do in the next few weeks since they're just coming out. <clears throat> um... um Anything else? I don't know. I don't think LVO? I LVO news? Yeah, LVO news. So the next event's LVO. Uh, I'm just starting to get everything sorted out to start getting everything ready. Uh, I know people are already asking about the player pack and stuff. We'll probably have that by next, hopefully by next month. I still have to talk to, uh, to Jake about the, the timeline. Month. When he wants to. Well, it's basically when does he want stuff done? I, I prefer doing things as soon as possible, so I'm right. worried about it. I agree. Uh, Sooner rather than later. I will put up the link in the next couple of days for model submissions because it's that time of year for oh, God, model already? submissions. Whew. Whew. As, as you may or may not know, John is no longer a judge for LVO, but you can still send him model submission questions. Nope. I mean, yeah, you can, and I'm going to tell you no, because that was always my favorite answer for model submission uh, questions. But, um, yeah, uh, we, we'll see. We'll, uh, I'll have that link up. I'll post it in the front. If, you have, if you're not a part of it already, I'll post it in the Frontline Gaming Community uh, Facebook group. Uh, as well, I may make a post on the website. Yeah, you should. Just I will have that. You're not the boss of me. 
I said you should. I will do that. Just I didn't to say get you that, had uh, to. I said you should. So people can start submitting now. I mean, I've got I've gotten emails over the over the course of the year. Has that um, guy making the uh, poor hammer army or whatever sent it to you yet? First, he has not. <laughs> I'm tempted to just let it ride. To be honest, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> You wouldn't? No. <laughs> you would say no because of all that hard work he's putting into I would, it. I would you? say no because I find the cost of posts up annoying. <laughs> <laughs> also, I wanted to say no to Matt Root's AdMech orcs, but I wasn't allowed. Oh, remember that time we streamed the game and we shamed him on on, yes. uh, on stream? Yes. yes. And then they pulled the they models. Pulled the models. <laughs> That was the best. Because they were, they were, he was using Skaven. He was so pissed. <laughs> he was, what was he? It was Skaven. Um, it was, it's not Rad it's, it's the one with the guns. And we were like, those aren't obliterators. There's no guns on those. What is this? <laughs> it's just an age of sickness. No, he was, using the, he was using the Rad Ogres that had guns. I forget what they're called. It didn't, yeah, it, it, but it didn't look anything like what it was. Because he used them as, I think he used them as aggressors in as a space marine army and then used them. I think he tried using them as obliterators in a chaos army. Yeah. It I matter. can't remember. Now. We still made fun of them. Didn't matter. I still remember making fun of them and making fun of those models, asking if those models were approved. And I remember during the game or at the end of the game, they ended up pulling they pulled them, them because they weren't approved. <laughs> Cause they yeah. pissed at us. <laughs> I think that's our shining moment. Oh, uh, that's what, that was one of my favorites. I think your shiny moment it was with a moment was making fun of that guy that had the name of, um, Oh, baby maker. Baby maker. Oh, my baby God. <laughs> I think he was embarrassed by that when he found out we were making fun of him. Whatever. Don't put that on the back of your shirt if you're not willing to like. Right? What do you want from me? Oh, well. I'm not the one back who put the that on the back of my back shirt. The old. That was, I think it was before COVID. That's how long ago it was. That was, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. back when people used to stream events that weren't, uh, what's his name? Yeah, now it's all super serious. Oh God! What's the worst. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. I have to at some point get my room in order. It's yeah. Still a mess. It's still a mess. I mean, I got a mess behind me because we got to move. No, up. no, 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 no. I, I, sp- the, there's a reason it's this camera angle. Yeah. And you can't see the floor. Nice. Nice. They just leave it at that. I like it. Like it. It's like a yeah. It's 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 bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm looking around and getting depressed now. Yeah. God, this is a lot of trash. <laughs> yes. So, um, again, keep a lookout for any announcements on the Frontline Gaming Community page, and uh, or don't. And as we, in a couple of weeks, we'll have uh, right, when we have our next show. Uh, again, I'm posting a lot of the old uh, Pod Save the Imperium stuff. Uh, we're almost ready out, John. We're almost at the end. We will have a new one. Well, I'll have it hint, done. Hint. I'll have it edited this weekend, and you can All post right. it whatever you want. Okay, but it will be finished editing this weekend. All right, cool. But uh, I think that's I think that's it for today. A nice short episode. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with short. short and sweet. But uh, we'll be back in a couple weeks. I think Tampa was canceled because of the hurricane. Yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> like, uh, any, anybody making a big deal about that was dumb. Sorry. You're done. The okay. – I don't think anybody was. I saw a couple of idiots on the internet. But that's because this is the internet. Oh, that's different. Um I think it was Reddit, actually, which is, you know, that was the problem in the first place. I was on Reddit. Warhammer Championship World or World Championship Warhammers next month. Mm, cool. Uh, my fellow judge, Keith, is going. Yeah. Did everybody work. open up their chocolate bars and get their golden tickets? Yes. Okay, good. What's funny is Keith had me look at the uh, top. I think I looked at the top five. I looked at the top five players in ITC, mm-hmm. and I think all of them are going to LVO. Okay, cool. Because they're all within like a hundred points of each other. Yeah, makes sense. Just gotta do. Gotta do. You know, you want to win? You gotta win. Oh no! I looked at the top ten. 
and and there and the and it's a hundred and ten points separating number one from number ten. Man, they're gonna be pissed when I show up and I win. Take all those points from. <sighs> okay, but you only have like two games to your. Oh, I'm not gonna win ITC. I'm just gonna win the NFL, the, the LVO, and then take all their points. Like, you heard it here first. <laughs> God, don't. John is going to win. God, Are you going to bring double Castellan? Please don't quote, like please don't quote me on any of this, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is literally me just being ridiculous. Not, this, this, this is me doing a stick. It's not real. This is not serious. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, what's his name? Alex Jones. I'm like Alex Jones in court. No, no, no. That's no, just, that, that's just character. It's entertainment. This is just entertainment, people. Entertainment. He said it was an exhibition. He said it was an exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's enough references for today. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, it wouldn't be a TFG episode without some references. Right. So, yeah, it's, I think once we get more information for uh, OVO, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it more. But I think right now, I think I'll put out that, that link and people can start yeah. submitting stuff and uh, try to get it answered as quickly as possible. But I think that's it. John? Yeah. Any last words of advice for the peoples? Yeah, stop being so dramatic and stupid all the time. <laughs> like all of you. Stop being so overly dramatic. Like all of you. And dumb and conniving and oh backstabbing and all these things. Just stop. Uh, it's toy soldiers, stop. people. Please, sir. Please stop. Please stop. No. 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 <laughs> the cheese mitt train has no brakes, John. <laughs> you guys are all like a seal door. I just wanted to say yeah. cheese mitt. I, I like that word. I know you do. Natalie makes fun of me so. if I use it. Why? Do you say it wrong? No, I, she just makes fun of me because I'm not Hispanic and I just say it more because she doesn't like it when I say it. <laughs> We already discussed your wife's uh, <laughs> ethnic upbringing, which I cannot say because I'm going to get in trouble. That's right. <laughs> Everybody's staying. even though I prob- and even though I've been called one before too. So everybody's staying mum. Mum, mum is the word. <laughs> I just want to live. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know, John. I saw it on TV. Yeah, me too. I heard it in a rap song, so I'm allowed to say it. No, wait. I heard it in a... Oh, God. <laughs> wait, wait, this is a wrong discussion. I know. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, whether it's on YouTube or on the podcast, whichever podcast you use, podcast listener you use. Uh, we'll, see each, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. And good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. See you later.